So today we're going to learn how to import Steam VR into your Unity project and get started with doing some basic object mapping and controller input. So to start with, let's uh, let's create a new Unity project and make sure that 3D is selected. And once Unity loads up, we will we'll begin. So our first step is we're going to go to a tab called the Asset Store right here and we're going to type in Steam VR. Now, anytime you're developing for the Vive, you want to make sure that you download this Steam VR plugin and import it into your project. Um, once you've done that, it will come up with uh, a couple warnings and all you have to do is just make sure you click accept all right here and you've made the right choice. Okay, so let's go back to your scene tab. So the Steam VR uh, plugin it comes with a couple of different things, but the most important one is going to be in the prefabs folder, and it's going to be called Camera Rig. So let's go ahead and drag that into the Hierarchy tab, and get started. So once you have this in, uh, dragged into the the scene view, you can see that there's uh, quite a few things inside of the camera rig, and we're going to talk about those in a sec. But first, we don't need this main camera anymore, so let's go ahead and delete it. So now that we've done that, um, let's go back to the Asset Store, and let's search for sci-fi gun, making sure that we choose free only, and we're going to find this little uh, thing that's on the asset store for free, and so we're just going to import it, and there we go. So once that's done, um, let's go back to our scene view, look down at the project tab, and double click the sci-fi gun. So once you're there, you're going to take this, uh, and you're going to drag it in to your, to your hierarchy view, but make sure that it's going to be a child of controller left. So you want it to look like this as you drag it in. Once you've done that, let's double click it and let's take a look. So as you can see, the gun has started, the orientation of the gun is clearly off. Because if we look at our camera rig, we can see that our camera is facing the right, but our gun is facing the wrong way. So to fix that, we're just going to change the Y rotation on the inspector to 90 and hit apply. So once we've done that, we can see that now our gun is facing the right way and it's ready to be used. So let's go ahead and do that same thing. Let's drag it onto the controller right. And so now, if we press play, we should be able to uh, use our controllers and they'll look like guns. Now the next step, obviously, is going to be actually making them shoot. And uh, for that, we're going to need what's called a, a script. So right click in your project, create C Sharp script, and let's call it controller manager. So once you have that, double click it to open up Visual Studio and let's get started on the code. So once Visual Studio opens up, uh, copy in this code right here. Um, and this code is, is pretty simple, but basically all we're doing is we're getting a reference to the actual controller itself, and we're just checking every frame to see if the user has pressed a trigger, and if they have, we're gonna go, uh, log out a message that just says trigger press onto the console. So once you guys have that down, uh, let's go back to the Unity Editor, and let's go back to your scene. So let's click on controller left and in the inspector tab, um, let's drag in the script we just created and let's also drag in steamvr underscore tracked controller. Now what this is going to do, if we look back at our script here, this allows us to use shortcuts such as uh, steamvr controller dot button mask dot trigger instead of using the longer function call we'd have to use without it. Um, and if you guys want more information on that, we have another article called EVR Button IDs and Button Masks Explained, and that'll go through the differences um, and when you'd want to use each one. But for our purposes, we're going to add this SteamVR Track Controller component and move on. So do this. make sure we do the same thing with the controller right. And once again, I'm going to add the SteamVR Track Controller, and let's save it. And if let's save our scene as play. And if we were to run this now, uh, and we pressed our trigger, we would get a console log that would say trigger press. Now that we know when the user has pressed a trigger, let's, uh, let's add some bullets so, that the user, so we can actually see what's happening as we shoot. So let's go to the asset store and let's type in ammo type. We're going to come up with this first package here which we're going to hit import on and we're going to wait for it to, for Unity to put it in. And once we have it, we are just going to choose one of the bullets that it includes and use that as the output for our gun. So for this one I'm just going to choose the first one. Um, you feel free to choose whichever one you like. So let's start by dragging this uh, bullet that we just got into our scene and just to make it easier let's rename it bullet. So once we've done that, uh, go over to the inspector panel, go to add component and add a rigid body. 
So the idea behind a rigid body is if you add one to any of your uh, game objects, you can, use, you can now use physics uh, with the object. So this is important because when we shoot it, we want to add some sort of force to it, and that's only going to be possible with this rigid body here. So now that we've done that, uh, let's open up our gun, and let's click right click and cre create empty. So the reason we're doing this is because we need to know where exactly we need to shoot the bullet from. So let's move this empty game object to where the barrel of the gun is so that we have an idea of where the actual bullet's going to spawn from. So now that we have that there, um, you can copy the position if you want as well. Um, just call it bullet spawner and let's leave it at that. So now make sure you go back to this and hit apply. And the reason we hit apply was that it's, it's actually saving the change that we made, which was adding this empty game object to this gun prefab, which means that it's gonna, we don't have to do the same thing on the other gun because it's a member of the same prefab. So with that in mind, we're actually gonna drag this bullet onto the project tab, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna save this object as a prefab, which we can then use in our scripts um, and other things later. So now let's do that. Let's open up our controller script, and let's take a look at the new code. So the first thing we've done is we've made a public reference to our the rigid body of our bullet prefab. We've also made a public reference to the transform that we, which we called fire position. So fire position is going to be connected to the empty game object which we called bullet spawner, and bullet prefab is going to be the rigid body that we attach to our prefab. And all we do is we're just going to add a few lines of code here in order to trigger something when the user actually presses the trigger. So all this is going to do is it's going to create a game object of the type bullet at the position that we set it to, and it's going to add some force to it so it goes forward and it looks like a real bullet. So let's go back to Unity, um, let's click on our controller left, and let's take a look at what just appeared. So these two components of the controller manager script um, just need to be dragged in. And then what unit, So what, what we really have to do is drag our bullet here, and the next thing we have to do is drag this bullet spawner into the transform. And once we've done that, we can save it, hit play, and we should be able to shoot uh, bullets with our trigger. Our last step in this tutorial is going to be to add some sound whenever we fire the bullet. So to do that, once again, uh, we're going to hit the asset store and we're going to type in weapons soldier sound. So you should see this package over here, uh, weapons soldier sounds pack. So it's free. So download it and import it. And actually this time what we're going to do is we only need this one sound. So let's not uh, clutter, clutter up our project extraneously and let's just grab this fire.mp3. So once we have that, uh, let's go back to our scene and let's find the sound itself and let's give it a listen. That sounds like a pretty good sound, so let's go to our sci-fi gun and let's add an audio source component. So once you've added that audio source, uh, go to drag the fire clip into the audio clip component so that it knows which song to play. Uh, so now that you have that, it's actually quite simple. What we're going to do is we're actually just going to add public audio source uh, audio, public audio clip clip, and we're going to say audio equal get component audio source. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to say audio dot play one shot clip. So well, all we did was we, once again, we created a component reference to the audio source, which we just added. Uh, we also referenced a clip, just in case. And when we fired the gun, we told the audio source to play the clip once. Play one shot just means it plays it once, uh, and that's all it is to it. So now the last thing we need to do in order to make this work is we go to our controller left and make sure that clip has the fire there, right there and on the right make sure that clip is there and that's it save it run it and you should now be able to shoot bullets and hear the bullet sound every time you shoot thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed the tutorial uh, if you want to see more content like this visit our website at leadingones.com uh, we have the download link for the full project in case you guys missed something uh, the text component of the tutorials and much much more